What's happening everybody? This is Robert the Cowboy Muhammad with Premier Leather Crafters again here to demonstrate you another tool. Uh, I probably won't post this video up until tomorrow because I know a lot of people are out there watching the games right now. So I won't distract you from doing that today. But I decided to take a break and to demonstrate this little jewel right here. I think this is one of the most important pieces that should be in every leather crafter's toolbox. The modeling tool or the modeling spoon, which it gets its name from the spoon shape in on there. I think you guys can see that. And this is a dual spoon. It has one end that's a little narrow than I think you may hold it like this and you can see it a little narrow than the opposite end. And what we're going to do today is we're working on a piece for a customer that's in Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let me give you a little for, uh, future background. Um, this is one of the earlier designs of the Model 2. This is actually my father's here, which back, you can tell the difference between what they look like between 25, 30 years ago, as opposed to this one here. Now, this one, you know, the newer pieces are, are made for a little bit more comfort, uh, just especially when you're doing a lot of work. Uh, le leather tattooing is what I do. And, but I still use my father's tool, too, because it has a stylus point on the end, on one end. And we can use these for really defining, really detailed work. Um, you can use it as a scratch out or, or just to scratch the, the lines or some detail because every part doesn't need to be cut. And I also use that spoon end as well. And you can tell, man, if you can really see that end, I've really been using this. And the great part about the older school tools is I can take this to any machinist and get them to really um, just mill that back a little bit to make it smooth again. But we're going to demonstrate today this tool here. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to hold this camera as well as work so you guys can see. Now, this is the piece that we're actually working on here. I'm going to prop this up so you guys can see it. And what we're going to do, um, we're trying to um, duplicate the shadowing in the eyes and the nose. And any, actually anywhere where there's a little shadowing on this, this drawing here, especially around the outside border edges, we're going to use this modeling tool to do that. Now, there are other tools out there that you can use to cause the separation, like your backgrounding tool here, this one. Or you can use any background tool, but a lot of to, to demonstrate the shadowing, we're going to use the modeling tool. So let me show you how we're going to do this. I've already pre cut my piece of where we're going to try to do, and I hope you guys can see this while I'm holding this. But we're going to take the bigger part of that spoon and we're just going to rub this down on all the pieces where that eye or the eye socket is shadowed on that skull and then to get into the smaller areas we're just going to flip that around and use that small end and we're just going to push that down now the burnishing part comes into effect because of the back and forth rubbing that you're using on that um, using on your leather and so you can also even use that end if you go a little bit overboard you can take that stylus and recut your groove or recut your knife mark a little bit. You can see how I'm using that. I'm just going with the original cut of the knife and we're just going to separate that again. Then we're going to take that tool and go right in the cut and we're just going to push that down. This is going to create the illusion or the 3D effect to where the eyebrow portion or eyebrow part is raised a little bit just to really cause that to separate from the from the other part of the of the drawing and we're just pushing that down you can pretty you can see i hope you guys can see now this little uh, darker part right here this is because we use water and in leather work and water is your friend in the designing part of it now and you just want to mist it you don't want to some people will get it really wet but I don't over wet my pieces because it's the effect that I want to use or to achieve when I'm doing uh, using my modeling spoon or even when I am cutting 
I just want to mist it a little bit just so I can get the desired effect. And we're going to just go all the way around in there. Now your spoon, the great part about your spoon and what I love about using this spoon is once you get down to the cut, your spoon is not going to go, your spoon is not going to go any further than that cut will allow it to. So you can really get in there and do some detail and work. And I hope you can see that. And we're just going to get in here. And you can turn your piece as you as you work. There's no one set way to, to do that. I like to turn my work so I can get the really see what I'm doing. And it's just the same as a tattoo artist would do. You know how they can manipulate and use shadowing and tattooing. Uh, every tool that a tattoo artist has or whatever technique he has in his tattoo parlor Tandy has a tool that can do the same thing. This is why I encourage everybody out there who's interested in doing leather work, whether you're a beginner or an advanced crafter, go and learn how to use your tools. Learn the different tools. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be around. Um, uh, I have a Tandy leather factory here about 73 miles away from me in Birmingham. And when I was taking the classes, and you guys can see pretty much what I'm doing while I'm talking, is uh, I had an opportunity to go down to Birmingham and learn what each one of the tools do. Because I had no idea, no idea when I first started crafting what this tool was used for. I had no idea what my father used, used it for. Even though I saw him work it a couple of times, but there are a lot of different uses um, for your tools and to really get an in-depth idea of what your tools can do I would encourage everybody to take those classes down there um, and just to really get in there and learn how to manipulate and give that illusion in your artwork when you're crafting great tool the modeling tool and you guys can see how it's demonstrated and used. I hope that I, I, I hope you was able to capture a little bit of it and I hope you was able to see how it's actually used. But again, um, if you have any questions, don't forget, please hit me up uh, either on my Facebook page at Permitted Leather Crafters on Facebook or you can email me now. We have a new email address that's up, Premier Leather Crafters at yahoo.com, all lowercase letters, all one word. And you can hit me up with your questions or your insights or whatever you want, uh, um, advice that I might can give you over these 20 plus years of experience. Um, but again, Robert the Cowboy Muhammad, I hope this helped you guys. Premier Leather Crafters, thank you for watching.